stg e discusses its rates before the San Diego City Council. I'll have details on today's meeting coming up. Holiday decorations bring the holiday cheer. How much extra will it cost you? We're working for you to find out. Are you giving your child melatonin to help them fall asleep? More and more parents are giving their children the supplement and we'll tell you why that has doctors concerned. When the biggest names in show business want to light up the stage like Britney Spears and Katy Perry, they call Janet Hansen. And does ginger ale really help your stomach ache? We verify. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. San Diego City Council members sound off on high SDG&E rates. Good evening, I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Jesse Pagan. Carlo Cicchetto is off tonight. The utility company presented an explanation of its rates and how much they could go up to the City Council today. CBS 8's Shannon Handy is live in downtown San Diego tonight after watching the back and forth in Council Chambers herself. Shannon. Yeah, Jesse and Marcella, there certainly was a lot of back and forth. Now, as part of its franchise agreement with the city, every year STG&E is required to disclose its rates, what's behind them, and what they expect next year to look like before the council. Now, while they did share some good news about the possibility of rates actually going down, council members question why they're so high in the first place. One of the commitments that we made was to be a more transparent company. stg &E Vice President Scott Kreider began his presentation with some good news. Right now, natural gas prices are much lower compared to earlier this year, thanks to warmer weather, more storage, and less volatility in the world market. The December rate, where we currently sit today, is at 56 cents a therm uh, per natural gas. And just to put that in a little bit of context, uh, in January, it was $3.45. Kreider went on to explain delivery rates for electricity are also down, in part because fewer customers are enrolled in public purpose programs and electricity sales are up 7%. That's expected to lower people's bills by $5 in January. We'll actually see about a 1.2 cent decrease uh, in January. Following his remarks, the public had a chance to share their thoughts. Two people spoke, including one woman who applauded the decrease but asked SDG need to do more, as well as former state assembly member Lori Saldana. A billion dollars in profit out of our community into the pockets of an oil and gas corporation. It is destroying our economic vitality. Next, it was the council's turn to respond. Most noted how high stg &E rates are. They are the highest in the nation. Uh, people cannot afford them here in San Diego. And Marty Von Wilpert of District 5 pointed out a recent state audit profit. which found while there are valid reasons for stg &E rates, the key one being wildfire mitigation, the utilities profits exceeded millions more than authorized by the California Public Utilities Commission. The legal, Von Wilpert says, it's wrong. You do have to make a profit. I understand that. At the same time, you don't have to gouge our customers. Von Wilpert and Kreider went back and forth, as did other council members who questioned if the utility is working in the best interest of its customers. Do you think that you've done enough in terms of storage, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of educating the public on efficiency to make sure that we do not see a tripling of the cost of a therm in this to come January 1st? I, council Mayor, I think we've done absolutely everything that we possibly can now, no action was taken today. Again, this was just a chance for stg &E to share their side and for the council and public to voice their opinions and ask questions. Council members say it's their way of keeping tabs on stg and &E, even though they really have little power about how they operate their company. Back to you. Shannon, you mentioned stg and &E is making more profits than what is actually authorized. How is that legal? Yeah, it's a good question and one I asked stg &E myself. It's pretty complicated, but essentially what they told me is the state authorizes one amount and then a part of their profits, which we just learned about today, is actually authorized by the federal government. So when they show their yearly profits to the state, it's combining different rates of return. And so it is beyond what just the state authorizes and therefore it's legal. All right, thanks for breaking that down, Shannon. A former San Diego County Sheriff's Department sergeant was in court today after pleading guilty to arranging a meeting for sex with a decoy pretending to be a 15-year-old boy. As CBS 8's David Gofferson reports, the 56-year-old defendant was supposed to be sentenced, but that all changed at the last minute. 
Former San Diego Sheriff Sergeant Luis Rios walked out of downtown court Tuesday, still uncertain what his sentence will be. In October, he pleaded guilty to a felony, meeting up with a decoy who he thought was a 15-year-old boy. The charge stemmed from an undercover sting operation set up by an online vigilante group. The group's founder posed as a teenager online and lured Rios to a parking lot in Mission Valley to meet up for sex. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Ramona McCarthy for the people. In court Tuesday, Rios was facing up to a year in jail at his sentencing, but his attorney asked for a continuance because Rios has moved to Nevada and wants to serve his sentence there. Deputy District Attorney Ramona McCarthy spoke afterwards. He wanted to see whether or not he could contact probation up in Nevada and see what terms and conditions should the defendant remain in Nevada be if he was sentenced on this case. Are you moving to Nevada? I live in Nevada, sir. An arrest warrant in the case alleges Rios, who used to work at the downtown jail, engaged in sexually explicit text messages with the undercover decoy in 2021 and 2022. The subsequent meeting and confrontation were live streamed on YouTube, leading to Rios's arrest in April. Rios is no longer with the Sheriff's Department. It will now be up to a San Diego judge whether he gets jail time or probation. If the court moves forward and grants the defendant probation, that probation, like any case, could come with a certain amount of custody time or a certain amount of conditions and restrictions. Do you have anything to say about this vigilante group that targeted you? Nope. As part of his plea deal, Rios will be required to register as a sex offender. Rios will remain out of custody on bail through the holidays now. His next court appearance is January 9th. At the downtown courthouse, David Goffertson, CBS 8. Thank you, David. Senate Bill 43, which would expand who qualifies for conservatorship, will not go into effect in San Diego this January. The county board of supervisors voted 3-2 to two to delay the bill here until January 2025, citing concerns over rolling it out successfully. The law includes people suffering from mental illness, substance abuse, and those at serious risk of harm to themselves as eligible for conservatorships. Mayor Todd Gloria supported SB 43 taking effect next month, but County Chairwoman Nora Vargas supports the delay until 2025. Meantime, today, the San Diego City Council voted unanimously to declare a behavioral health bed crisis in the city. The resolution passed with all eight council members voting yes during the council meeting today. The goal is to increase mental health resources across San Diego. The measure also paves the way to explore zoning options to minimize hurdles for behavioral health facilities. The Port of San Diego is one step closer to allowing Top Golf to build a venue right along the waterfront on East Harbor Island. Today, the commissioners approved a term sheet with Top Golf. Now that that's approved, a lease agreement can be drafted for consideration by the board sometime next year. Here's some renderings, which look pretty cool. The estimate on the project cost is $61 million, with a minimum estimate for rent of $1.5 million every year. Many of you have already put up your holiday lights and some setups are pretty extravagant. CBS 8's Brian White is working for you. He's live in Claremont to find out how much the extra lighting could impact your SDG and E bill. Brian. Marcella, Jesse, I've got my hot chocolate in hand. I'm ready for these holidays and so is everyone here on Lana Drive with lighting displays and decorations really amplifying the holiday spirit. But how much will something like this cost you on your electric bill? It really means a lot that people enjoy it. People enjoy putting things together just to bring smiles to people's faces. Donna Park has lived in the neighborhood for 46 years. Her late husband started it all by asking neighbors to put up one strand of lights each. Now we have evolved into all of this from one strand in 1977 to this. So I asked Donna and her neighbors how much extra these lighting displays cost to run. Fortunately for me, I have solar. So that that helps me a lot. But before solar, yeah, you figured you'd have at least a $200 extra bill. About how much would you say it raises your bill? Um, I don't know, maybe 100 a year or something or 200. 
One thing that factors in for higher costs is the time of day all these lights are running, mostly during SDG&E's peak hours between 4 and 9 p.m. It gets dark at about 4.30 now, and most people at least leave their lights on until 9 or 10. And uh, so they're caught right in the, in the midst of that most expensive uh, electrical service that you can possibly buy. Nina Babiars is director of development for the nonprofit Public Watchdog. She says the old incandescent lights use 8 to 10 times the power of an LED. You know, a lot of people get their old Christmas lights out year after year, but this is the year to get them out and throw them out. And the reason being is that uh, investing in LED will help you cut the expense of the lighting down. Donna and most of her neighbors have taken that advice, switching to more cost-effective lights over the years. LED is, is the way to go when you're doing a lot, especially a lot of, of lights. It does help quite a bit. Now this home is on Lana Drive in Claremont near Madison High School and this street is known for all of its lighting displays. Everyone around here is participating, so come on and check it out. Back to you, Jesse. Now, Brian, we gotta get, we gotta tell the people here, how much are they selling that hot chocolate for that cup of gold that you got in your hands? That's right, they're selling a lot of things here and this this right here, let me, let's ask Justin himself here, how much does this hot chocolate cost? Yeah, so our hot chocolate's $2 and then we have a bunch of other snacks, drinks, and we have popcorn over there for three dollars so come by grab a snack and enjoy the lights okay what's your dog's name lucky all right lucky and justin here selling snacks and hot chocolate popcorn everything everything's two dollars so come on and check it out all right brian white live for us tonight brian thank you here at cbs 8 we want to help solve problems affecting you or some things that you want to know about your neighborhood if there's something you'd like us to look into email us at working for you at cbs 8.com Still ahead tonight, college presidents address growing anti-Semitism on their campuses. Plus, some local kids got an early Christmas courtesy of the Padres holiday giving tour. Temperatures were on the warm side today. We had widespread 80s for our daytime highs. But how long will this heat stick around? Those details are coming up. And up next, a wild police chase that went in reverse at one point.